Sega. Hello and welcome to the first Total War Attila feature spotlight video. In our recent trailer, created using the Attila engine, we hinted at the role that politics and diplomacy might play in the pursuit of conquest. In this video, we'll give you a deeper insight into how these systems work. You can see here on the diplomacy screen that the UI has been reworked so things are clearer and more concise. There's now a selection of more detailed filters at the top of the screen, and armies, agents, settlements, sieges, and resources can all be toggled on or off to aid clarity. You can also see other useful factors such as wealth, food, religion, and fertility. And the Known Factions tab is now resizable, so you can view more or less factions at one time. You can also select how to sort the list of known factions by clicking on the arrows by each heading. So if you want to say, arrange a diplomatic marriage, it's now easier than ever. A faction's strength is defined by its power, so the Western Roman Empire starts at rank 1, as it begins with a large number of armies and regions. This information is really useful to know when you're figuring out who to make peace with and who to wage war against. In Total War Attila, politics has seen some fundamental improvements. First of all, the family tree makes a welcome reappearance and brings with it a host of new functionality and ways to shape the world around you. Power is the sum of two factors in Attila, dominion and control. Dominion is defined by the sum of your family member's influence versus non-family faction member's influence. Control is won and lost through in-game events and political machinations. Characters will gain and lose influence based upon their performance in the field as generals, admirals or provincial governors. The proportion of power wielded by your family defines faction-wide bonuses and penalties such as the collapse of public order or the stamping out of corruption. By hovering over each section of the power tab, you can see the faction-wide effects at play. Keeping a balance at around 50 to 60% will give you the best faction-wide benefits. You can now assign governors to provinces who will then reside in that province, affecting local development based on their personal skills. And having a governor assigned has now become a prerequisite for issuing an edict in a province. You don't need to control an entire province to assign a governor, and the governor will always reside in the province capital. If you don't own the provincial capital, however, he'll be assigned to the next most developed region. Furthermore, a governor will lead the local garrison forces into battle when his settlement comes under attack. As there are limited roles within your empire, you won't be able to assign all your characters to important positions. A character may also be assigned to another of higher rank as their retainer. This allows them to gain experience and influence based upon the actions of their mentor, without having to assume control of a force or province themselves. Think of it as an apprenticeship in the governor's arts. We hope you enjoyed this video. Keep an eye out for more Total War Attila feature spotlights in the near future.